Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And um, you've seen this photograph many a times before. And basically what I said about a fortnight ago, it would be nice to have a photograph of this wall looking this way from west to east to see what's going on in here. Now in a previous video last week I showed you a aerial view of the station and this was not here. It was this wall from here to here and then the wall come the other way it must have finished about there just behind that ballast hill there and this was not here there was a siding running right round there into the yard uh, with some coal trucks on it but since then I have gained some new photographs from a chap called David Wilson who has sent me some photographs of this wall and the wall beyond right away through of how it looks now. So here we are with one of David's photographs. We're looking into the goods yard and there's the pillar there, there's a pillar there, there's a stone wall there and straight away you can see the brick wall of South Shields and that's what's remaining now the only bit of the station that is left now in this photograph this is the north end wall as you can see you can just see the corner there to your left where the wall is finished off and if you look closely if we can zoom in zoom in the photo I think um, you can see the window arches there in amongst the graffiti and same with the one next door you can just make it out there now the line is still used along the back there as sidings but the rest of the station is long 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 gone so what's interesting about this photograph is it's going to help me in the way I do the last wall considerably because I'm going to use that style. So in this photograph you can see the main supporting walls either side of the window which gives this wall its particular strength. There you have an arch window and here you have a door, probably one of those double doors that we've seen before um, in the previous build of the station. Now I do have a couple of doors which I want to use. Um, whether that's original there or not, I am not 100% sure. It looks original. So if you remember last week and we had that aerial view of South Shield Station, this kind of confirms that this wall in the centre was put up at a later date. Because there's the wall there that finishes. And you've got all these supporting walls in between. There's a window, door, window, door and then window and it goes on like that all the way through. So I've got a decision to make now on how I'm going to build the building on platform 2. Last but not least, and I'm glad that David took a photo of this column because although I've got photographs of it um, in a really old black and white photograph but it doesn't give you the details on the top like we have here I just lift the camera up slowly you can see it 
the, the actual capping stone has got some great detail on it. So this is the way it's chamfered back and with the flutes down the sides as well. Um, I might not be able to model that in model format, I don't know. Well, I'll have a go. But I'd like to put those somewhere in and around the station. Maybe not 100% where they should be, but yeah, I'd like to put, build some of them. So thanks again, David, for sending me all the photographs and um, very much appreciate uh, you taking the time out and um, sending them to me. So here's where we left off from last week. Uh, I managed to get all the columns down and I started the wall at the very end there. And um, one thing I missed off the last video was building this wall. Um, if I included it in the video, the video would have been at least an hour long. And uh, so I think that's probably one of the reasons why I left it out. Because when I downloaded all the video from the peak, from the camera, it was nearly an hour and a half long. By the time you add it every, edit it, everything, it would have been about an hour long. So I left that out the video, but at least you, you can see it now. It's, it's no different to how I've done these walls in the past. It's exactly the same. Coffee stirring stick on the top, scored, and then painted the suit. Same here. Um, it's lollipop stick and two different sizes of coffee stir and stick there with two coffee stir and sticks glued together and then chamfered to suit and uh, I painted that one at the same time over there so that complements uh, the centre of the station so let's go to the other end the next thing to do is to finish this wall off completely now I had a, a comment from Gerald Hyde and what he suggested was is to have a guy painting these windows if thought you'd these painting them white which I think is a brilliant idea and uh, I think I'll use that Gerald um, I think it's such a good idea I'm going to get on with it um, before this wall is finished so thank you for that and I'll, I'll take you up on that offer so that's the next thing I want to get done I, I need to get this wall finished get it um, put all the strengthening ribbon in and the plinth along the bottom um, like we've seen in the photo and uh, then we can think about how I'm going to build the back building down here so there's nothing wrong with striking while well, the iron's hot, so I just thought I'd just paint a few of these lines out to represent them being painted. So I'm just going to try and do this very gently. And what I'll do is... Uh, find some little chappy somewhere to uh, paint them. So as you can see the little chappies is sort of half finished one of half started one. So thanks again for that uh, suggestion and as you can see I have used it. Right so back to the wall. As you can see I have done all the paperwork <laughs> as it were so all the sandstone's done so that'll be painted uh, in the usual way so the next thing to do is to do all the windows with this um, brickwork on the top just by cutting out what you get with the old type Medkov sheets um, so if you've got any of this hang on to it so once you cut your brick arch out, I mean I've been fairly lucky here because the windows are virtually the same um, size That's what I require for the arch As you can see So all I've got to do is cut that in the middle but lose the middle brick 
if that makes sense. So where I've got the two there in the middle, just mark it. Lose a centre brick and it's exactly the right width I need to cover the top window. And all I've got to do is just take it to the double bricks there and just a slight angle, just cut it back. And do the opposite for the other half. Just lose the pencil mark and just lose that brick in the middle. And then glue it on. So as for gluing them on, just require a little bit of PVA to go across the top of the arch. Not too much, just enough to, to do what you've got to do. Not too much, just take that off. Right, and then just place the two half arches in the middle. Just making sure you keep the middle to the middle and not put one of the middles on the outside. And just using a Q-tip to get them somewhere near. If you're unsure, just look at the one next door. Right, and you'll have them like that. Right, I have flipped the wall over to do the inside now. I'm just adding these reinforcing card. It's uh, 5 mil wide, 2 mil thick, and as you can see I've already pre um, painted the edge but I'll go over that again because I'm not 100% uh, happy with that. And then just put these in. So we'll have one there and then one there. Something similar to what we've got over on platform one. Right, so I'm finished with the inside detailing, apart from the plinth brick which goes around the base there. And the outside wall, I've just added the top plinth. I haven't done the reinforcement bits coming down yet because I want to save that bit until we've fitted the corner piece on. So that's what we're going to concentrate on next, the corner piece. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fit a window into the end wall. I've already glued the card on there and I've pre-marked it on the inside roughly 2 millimeters um, in all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is just cut an angle on each corner like so. So it comes into the middle and then cut down over from the middle again. And then what I'll do then is score line right across the bottom. So I'm cutting right through the card. And then cutting the card along that line there. And I'm doing the arch next. And then the other line from the base upwards. And hopefully that centre piece should just pop out like that. Right, so the next thing to do is to push all those corners on the inside. So what I'll do first is just gently use them round with a pencil so it follows a card. And then that's ready for gluing. Just peel them back. And just put a little bit of glue in it. Right now that we've got the glue in, all we've done now is just push the corners around. And then we'll just let that go off for a little bit. And then we'll put this face on, which I've already pre cut. So we just place the card on. Now this card has a 2mm overhang because it's got to meet the wall that's coming across the back which we haven't looked into yet. So I've left the little ledge there. And then we'll just do the same with that one. Mark it out 
and then cut it through and then we can fit a window in. Right, so the next thing to do is to put the window in. Uh, I've put a little bit of Yoohoo glue on the bottom which will help stick the sill to the wall and then just push that in. Like so. Right, so coming back to the end wall, just about to put some glue onto this five brick high plinth which goes around the base of the wall. So I'm just uh, doing that, getting it flush with the bottom and then straight into the corner. first piece of reinforcing card in and we'll let that dry for a little bit and then we'll do this piece what I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stretch the card between each of these reinforcing pillars if you like so it doesn't look overly rounded so that now finishes that wall off nicely I've left the end along here, uh, the reason being is for the wall coming this way, the end wall. So we shall go back to that now. So as you can see I've glued the end wall to the corner wall. So what I've done, this little strip that we left along a minute ago, I'm just now gluing that in place. So it should follow the line of the platform. Hopefully, it'll all stay square. So now that that's dried, um, the next thing I want to do is place a piece of card in there, two mil thick card, and then place this stone strip over the top, and that will give the impression that it's sitting on a stone buttress. I'm going to do that all the way around the back. Um, once I finish this end in this corner I'll draw up a plan of what I want to do with the back wall. So this is part of it. Um, it's just to make up the height difference from the platform to the baseboard mainly but uh, we'll see how I go. I have placed the end wall onto the platform so it gives myself and you guys a look of what's happening regarding the way it's going to look. Um, I'm going to carry on with this pattern on the inside only but on the outside I'm going to try and keep it as original as possible with exception of a stone wall here. So that will be included. Um, yes, yeah, so with that in mind, I can now concentrate on what to do with the outer walls. And here we are looking at the same wall from the other side. So here it is on paper. You've got the brick brick walls come across, come across, and it's open plan here. That's one idea. Um, not too sure about that. I think I might continue with the brick wall across and have this little bit of platform here come out and come along a little bit so that the door from the office is here as well. Um, but um, we're just going to have to um, wait and see. Um, I'd like to try and borrow some of the ideas we've got over there and then bring them over to here. Um, we've seen in the photographs that we have a concrete plinth which goes from here to here which supports the roof that has the 
um, skylight that will stay so it's just it's a bit bitty it's a little bit of what should go there what what really should go there but but I'm sure originally on that air photo um, photograph that we saw from the upper height that when you look down that middle wall was not there so let's work out what I'm going to do I think firstly I'll build the two walls one from that end to bring in line with this pillar and this wall to come in line with this pillar so I've got an open space of three arches one, two, three and then we'll work out where we go from there yeah, so hopefully it'll blend in um, with the station um, it's already looking like it's blending in with the little details that I have added already um, that's uh, my main concern but after all it's only a model and um, we shall see what it looks like when it's all finished so let's crack on with the walls right we're back at the bench and here we have our two walls we have the southern wall and the northern wall first wall I want to mark out first is the southern wall now let's go back to our photographs now, as you can see with this photograph we have at least one two windows before a door and behind that pillar there's another window and then a door so if we look at the photograph I just got recently this kind of confirms it because there's a door there's a window there's a door it looks like this wall here has been shortened so you can see we've gone back to this photograph and it just shows you the end of the wall there even the the plinth that runs along the bottom finishes there so this wall has to be added at a later date otherwise why would they go with one design and then stop with another so I'm going to cheat a little bit here um, I've pre-marked the centres of each of these columns and all I'm going to do is make sure that that's tight in there and then just carry the centres across onto the top of the card and then the windows will go in between each of the columns So it's well worth checking the centres. Um, I've marked them onto the card, uh, the 68 millimetres centres. So it's it's roughly what we have on the pillars. So in between each one of these, there'll be a window and a door. Now I'm talking about doors. Um, I've had some gremlins because I've checked the doors that are made originally to um, how they fit onto the card here and I've offered up my window to the position where it should be and this is what I've found my doors are too small and I also checked it against one of the figures, I've got a flag man here and you can tell he's a little bit taller than the door not a lot, but a little bit 
So I'm remaking these doors again. I mean, I'll, I'll probably use them at some point, maybe when I'm um, making the terrace houses. They'll be ideal for ideal for back doors rather than um, the doors that I'm, I want for here. So I'm remaking them again, all three. So as you can see, I've made three new gates. Um, there's not a lot in them when you look at the height. If I put them edge to edge of the base. Now you can see what I've done. I have measured for the gates 25 mil, including the frame. Uh, what should be is 25 mil in, um, plus the frame. So I've got a difference of height there of at least, well, two mil. So the poor guys would have banged his head on these doors. Uh, at least with these new ones, they can walk straight through. But never mind, they will get used. So that just goes to show, even I can make mistakes. Right, so I thought well, while I was making three new gates, I might as well make another double gate. Um, uh, like this one here. Because I think I'm going to be a gate short, so I thought I'd make another set of loading door bays. Right, now we can concentrate back on the wall. So this is how I've decided how I'm going to do the southern wall. Um, now, some of the photographs show this window missing and two small doors here. So what I've decided is I'm putting it back as it was. So I'm going to put a window in there, window in there, double loading door, window and then double loading door again. So that's how it's going to pan out. Well, that's the plan anyway. So as you can see, I have cut out all the doors and windows for the southern wall. And I've partially covered it with brick because I'm still working out what to do at this end where we have that gaping hole. Um, as for the northern wall, I have marked out four doors and windows as you can see. So we have four of those large windows. Now then, in one of the photographs, we see one of these windows with one of these windows and what looks to be door bricked up. So I'm presuming, this is where presumption comes in, that there may have been an office on the inside. So this door would have led out into the goods yard. But um, anyway, this is what I'm going to go with. I'm going to cut these out get it to the same state as the other wall and I'll come back to you. So here's the photograph I was talking about. Um, as you can see we got the, the large windows here then we have the uh, windows that we have on platform one and then we got the bricked up door. So what I'm going to run with is I'm going to put an office here but it's going to be on the outside. Let me show you what I've got in mind. So this is what I've got in mind. Uh, I'm going to have an office on the outside of this northern wall um, which will sit in here. So obviously with the door, the door will be there and we'll have the window there like so up to that line and then this wall will be facing us with the large window in here so let me assemble the office and have a look so this is how I've interpreted that photograph as you can see we've got the little office on the outside of the building Um, there will be some steps running down from the door. Um, they're the wrong ones there at the moment. They're just there just to give us an idea. Uh, they need to be a little bit wider. And I will put a handrail on them. But I might bring the steps coming towards us rather than run along the wall like that. And, uh, I've still got the uh, windows to cut out. Of, on that card, that card's still a bit damp, so I'll wait till that's totally dried. 
So the next thing to do is to cover this little office with some brick card. So with the southern wall what I plan to do here is to take the wall in by about 15-20mm and run it along and join it to this wall. So obviously the walls are going to be slightly higher here and I come up a little bit and go straight across and back on both of these. I have now assembled the little office and added the brick paper and fitted the windows and doors. Uh, as you can see it's just a little window that side, the standard big window there which is going to go all the way along that wall there and uh, uh, the door on the, on the side there. Now then, when I was marking up for the windows I used some of these come handy clips and just clip the paper on there first before marking it out. And uh, I draw it on the inside but coming away from the sides for about 2 mil the thickness of the card. So that allows you to fold the card in over and gives you these nice crisp edges as you can see. So that's that done. Um, so the next thing is to make some steps to come down from that level to the ground level. And then that's that little job done. Uh, right, so I'm just about to do some steps. Now these old steps I've made before it takes seven steps to do the 18 millimeters uh, using two mil strips of card. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use one piece of 2 mil card and one piece of 1 mil card but what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them together but leave a little bit of a overhang on the edge so it looks like we have a step and that then reduces the amount of steps I need to do the 18 mil I will lose uh, at least a couple of steps and uh, I think because of the distance between there and there it might just work. So I'll glue it together and then we'll have a look. So now that I've glued all the card together you can see the lip on the um, steps and uh, that's what I was looking for. I've, I've actually taken the corners off as well because that's the outside edge so I've removed the corners. So the only thing now to do is just to imprint the stonework onto the um, steps like I've done with these. Now it works out roughly about the same length of card but if you look closely it is actually less steps. I have now stuck the steps to the side of the office um, and I've painted them a matte 74 yellow. It's the same matte I use on the sandstone. So what we're just going to do now, I'm just going to take a tiny pinch of this grey humble paint here and just darken them down a bit, just the tops. Just lightly brush it in and see what it looks like. Um, the yellow is still a little bit wet. And what I'll do in a minute is once I've let it settle on there for a little bit is just get a cotton bud and just wipe it off a little. Just trying to get it to go in the grooves and then obviously once this is done I'll just give it a little bit of weathering when I come to weather the whole building. Now I'm just going to take off as much of the grey as I can. 
try and leave. I think that's enough. What I'll do later on, once all the stone paper has been added, is weather it down again. I have now glued the office to the main wall at the back there, and I've also added some stone walling um, to the wall and the steps, which makes it look calm. Um, quite effective. Um, so yeah there's not a lot left to do to this wall now. Um, put the windows in and obviously do what we've done here with the sill and the, the brick arch work to finish this off and then that's that one done. Um, let's have a quick look on the inside. So as you can see we have some sort of similarity between platform one and two now with these type doors and windows so that kind of matches what we've got in the photograph so it's come along as you can see so uh, I think that's all from the this week and um, keep safe and um, enjoy your railways see you again bye for now Bye.